Hey everybody, welcome to another class with the Cherry Top Crafts. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. And today we will be watercolor painting. These are the scenes we will be painting. Yes. It's really pretty, nice and springy, floral. warm. Um, we need yeah. warmth here in Michigan. Yes. It's cold. It's, it's cold. cold out there today. We're tired of winter. I mean, Especially it's looking March, at this scene. Yes. So yeah. we are dreaming of spring. So please come dream of spring with us too. Yeah. We'll be building up multiple layers to mm -hmm. create the scene. Um, and we'll just take it step by step with you guys. Yeah. So even if you are a beginner, I mean, just, yeah. just, just try. Jump in. Yeah. It's kind of a abstract. Um, there's not like a lot of really harsh lines yeah. or yeah. a lot of drawing. It's more just loosely going Loose. in with your brush. Yes, loose florals. That's yep. what I like to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you, what you're going to need? Yeah. Um, watercolor paper, whatever you have. And we are currently using the Strathmore watercolor paper, but any just nice mixed media or watercolor thicker paper will mm -hmm. work. Any brand is fine. Um, you could. You, you need brushes. Yeah. Brushes. A uh, bit mm. of water. Water is warm water. Oh, is that it? feels nice. <laughs> Oh, um, you want like at least one i'm dropping them already at least one bigger brush um mm -hmm. this will be helpful to do bigger areas yeah. especially the first layer we're gonna do the whole background first mm -hmm. and then you're gonna want maybe one or two smaller brushes just for more detailed work and the uh, grasses the branches yeah. um, why not and then you need some watercolors we have yes. a range of watercolors we set up here um okay. yep so, so we, have colors. we have koi and tubes yeah we have alt new yep this is new we did we just brand started new carrying yeah. alt new. um and this is their set of 12 mm -hmm. basics or something and they make really pretty. really pretty colors that's I what love i use this for, pink right yeah. here most of these have yes. are the alt new ones because it, it just went really well with yeah. these springy colors this palette is just really um, nice i'll be going back and forth yeah we'll end up using we'll probably use a little bit of everything yep. a little bit of everything um and then you're also you don't have to but painter's tape is have to tape down your paper mm -hmm. and then you can get a nice clean edge when you're done if you want that look like how yeah this is. these have like this crisp border mm -hmm. which looks really nice when you have like a lot happening and mm -hmm. then it just makes it look a little more sophisticated yeah and it's really satisfying pulling that tape off at <laughs> yes, the end you're like Ooh, love it love it okay so grab your paper and go ahead and tape it down to whatever surface you're working on <laughs> that's just it's really loud <laughs> okay i like to just go along the bottom um line it on the like the very edge then you don't have to worry about getting it straight or not and um yeah i guess maybe we should have got two rolls of this yeah. <laughs> that's okay uh we are doing a vertical um painting so you could try it horizontal yeah, that's sure. fine too but for me i had to i had to look at it vertically I'm going to take my time. It's oh, connected. <laughs> I thought you read that. And make sure you really press down on this. Um, you don't want any of your watercolor to seep through. Yeah. Oh, looks like Sarah's here with us. Hi, Sarah. Good afternoon. She's on our design team. Sarah Scraps. Ooh, Sarah Scraps. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Teresa and Carmen and Lizzie. Everyone, thanks for watching. Are you guys painting along with us? Let us know. We're always curious. You guys are just here to watch. Just kind of get some watch, tips. Paint later. Paint later, yeah. Or paint at the same time. Yep. It's really relaxing. Yeah. As you get going. Watercolor painting can be very relaxing. I just kind of like get in the, you know, yeah. get in the rhythm of it. Right. It's just fun. Looks Ooh, like Stacy's painting. Stacey's painting with us. Yay. Awesome. What kind of watercolors are you using, Stacy? Hi, Christina. 
Uh, also, if you don't have like watercolor watercolors, if you have like the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks, you can use those. Um, like the ink pads or the reinkers, you can just squirt or swipe some on a like a plastic surface or glass surface and add water and there you go you have watercolors i'm just adding some water to some of the colors i know we're going to use so they can just you know start breaking up a little bit mm -hmm, so the pigment's mm -hmm. easier to pick up. sarah says she's going to paint later okay awesome well probably don't need black or brown but they're there they're there just okay. in case so oh, you want to start with a very wet brush. Your big brush. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah we'll be using the whole background yeah, first. Yeah, we're going to do the background first. Um, so we're going to do a lot of like blues up here and green blue on the bottom. And then if you look closely, there, there's a lot of like orange and yellow pink mm -hmm. kind of in here. That's really pretty. So starting with the blue and we want to just slowly build up color. Um, so I'm starting just kind of getting the sky wet, going back and forth, um, adding blue and adding more water. It's always easier to add mm -hmm. add more later. It's harder to, you know, take off the color once you've added it with watercolors. Yeah. Easier just to build it up. Yep. Start small. Uh, I'm getting out some of the tube, the core watercolors too, because I know we'll be using some yeah. of these too. It's good to have a range of shades too, yeah. and using different uh companies they'll each have a different shade let's see oh yes stacy says you're missing paper towels as applied yes oh, actually we forgot paper towels yeah so, you, you guys will them. also need paper, paper towels, towels. Yes. that's an important one because you really yeah if you don't want like a ton of pigment you, you wipe it off first um i'm always dabbing paper towels as i go and that's the one thing I forgot. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. Always before the lives were like, do we have enough paper towels? Do we have everything? No, probably not. Add no. Nope. Go get some more. And then the time that we really do need it, totally forget. That's okay. <laughs> we have people. We have people on it. That's a lot. But yeah, we will, we will use all of these. <laughs> okay. Here's like half for you. Half for me. Great. I'm sure we'll go through all this. Okay. Um, and for my, sky, for my sky, for my sky, I'm work. I'm adding most of the darker colors towards the top, and then I'm working my way to lighter, um, so it'll blend in with my flowers a little bit more. Mm. If you ever add too much, yeah, grab your handy paper, paper towel, towel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just pick it up. Yep. Because yeah, I want to make sure it blends in and has. More of like that, that nice look of blending in with um, the bottom. Yeah. You don't really want like a sharp line mm -hmm. across here. Um, that's not kind as more flowy. Yeah, like it's just flowy, flowy. Is that a technical term? Yep. Sure. Uh, and there's not really like a lot of like technique to this. Like you're just kind of swishing it around and yep having some areas that are a little darker mm -hmm. some that are a little lighter and and i'm sure we can add more as this starts to dry too mm -hmm. when watercolor dries it has it looks a lot lighter than when it's wet mm -hmm. so if you are like oh no that's way too dark just wait till yeah, it dries it and it could be yeah. the perfect shade and it dries pretty quickly yeah but um if you want to dry it faster though especially when you're doing layers mm -hmm. just get heat a, gun. a heat gun heat yep. dryer blow dryer whatever yep. you have on hand yeah also the taping down is really helpful for when the paper starts to warp yeah sometimes that happens yeah because yeah. <laughs> when you're using a lot of water it just tends to warp a little bit mm -hmm. and that's okay you can always flatten it out later too yeah Put it under a heavy book for a night and it'll mm -hmm. be good to go. I'm starting to add some greens. I'm trying to catch up to you. <laughs> um, I'm kind of adding the darker greens on the sides and then more of like the yellow greens mm -hmm. in the center mm -hmm. and uh, up higher a little bit. So we're just blocking in 
our main color areas. Sky, grass, flowers. Yeah, that's the thing with watercolors. You really are layering a lot. You're building it up. It's not just one yeah. one time through, like mm -mm. with acrylic. Yeah, a lot of you can you could get it done in one layer. Yeah, yeah. Watercolors, you don't. You can, but it just it wouldn't have that like the depth yeah. that you want. Yeah, and this painting has a lot of depth in it. Yeah, I'm gonna even add in my pinks. Put some yellow in there. Uh, let's see what else. Now, last time I kind of wanted more. Um, I wanted to bring my flowers up more. That's up to you, like how much of your sky and grass flowers you want. And I was thinking of maybe moving these up a tiny bit more. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I might go in with, with like my pink and a little bit of purple. Yeah, it depends if you want more flower or more sky. Right. It's up to you. Some orange. Getting orange over on this side. Woo! Look at that pink. That's way too much. Maybe a little orange over here. Paper towel. To the rescue. And if you would rather have more purple flowers or more red flowers, mm -hmm. just add them on in. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of my favorite parts is just like the background layer. Yeah. It doesn't, have to be yeah, perfect you don't, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to like really look a certain way yet you're mm -hmm. just kind of planning ahead a little bit mm -hmm. here but um i just find this really relaxing <laughs> let's see yeah i really like this palette this is yeah. like all the colors you're yeah using. this is like yeah it's a really good springy colored palette mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm mixing a little bit of my other blues here, too. I guess I'm doing this off camera. <laughs> well, over here on my palette, um, I have oh, two yeah. different, I have two different blues of the koi. Can't see my blues either. And oh. it's pretty dark, but I'll just keep it there. Well, I don't think. He's... I want my bottom to be darker. I'm, I'm going to eventually build it up with the grass and everything, so I, so I am going to start darker down here. Darker blue. It's one that's green, too. And if you're using tubes, you really don't need a lot. Like, just mm -hmm. the tiniest mm -hmm. little bit will last you a while. Um... And then if you ever just have them sitting out drying in a palette like this, you you can just leave it out. Yeah, like, that's what back. happened with this yeah. one. Yeah, this, we actually use these to color the yeah. first round. I, that's what I love about watercolors. They're you perfectly fine. You can just come fine. back a day, a week later, you and just, just rewet yeah, it. And add some more go. water to it, yes. and it's good as new. I love that. I mean, I so love you acrylic can, yeah. too, but the thing is, you you have you to end like, up wasting. Yeah, you have to like saran wrap it or something, yeah. cover it somehow, and then still, it'll. And then I still like forget yeah. about it. <laughs> yep. But watercolors, it's okay if you forget. Very forgiving. Hmm. Let's see. I think I might do some more orange mm. in this area mm -hmm. here. Yeah, you already have your orange. I didn't really add much orange yet. You can go kind of back and forth between your sky and your kind of middle area here. And then your bottom. So we're kind of working like three different parts, mm -hmm. I guess. Just get it how you want it um, before you start the next layer. It's kind of hard to go back to do background. Yeah. I'm already bubbling up already. Ugh. Yep, so is mine. And then sometimes when it dries, I am getting a couple weird harder lines here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, so I just go back over it again. With water. Maybe add some more blue. I'm just gonna make it up as I go. 
that's pretty much our motto yep for our classes like yep. we just mm. we have a plan but we mm -hmm. we yep. also just kind of make this up too yeah yeah it really depends oh i also let's see there's um there's also a, some sets have a white which is really nice to do too oh yeah this is the chinese white um because then you can make it kind of like cloudier so i'm gonna put some white into my sky and that's that's a lot of white whoops <laughs> Because I kind of want it to look... Yeah, my sky ended up drying cloudy. a lot yeah, lighter. Yeah. So I need to add a bit more color to my sky. I'm going back with my white. So really, you can play around with this back layer for, for as long as you and, need. Uh, like, yep, I mean, you it. can go for a yep. while. <laughs> So I'm just kind of making this, I don't know, kind of cloudy and airy. I also, ooh, that Look looks at those. nice. Yeah, that that really looks like a cloud. Some of those thicker areas, yeah. Yeah. That's just a little happy accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Bob Ross would say. Yep. Um, let's see, I really like this turquoise. -y. And also, when the watercolor dries, it does cool things like moving it around mm -hmm. and, yeah, really just how it dries. Um, it's a little unpredictable. Right. But it can be very cool. Especially if your paper is warping. <laughs> yes. Like, like these. Yeah. <laughs> it's part um, of the process. Yeah, I guess I could tape this down more, like on my edges and that. Yeah. I'm not super tight on the edges, but that's okay. Sometimes I like how it is just unpredictable. Yeah. It kind of does its own thing. Yep. You just got to embrace it. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, what is this? This is the purple. I'm going to add a little bit of purple in here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to actually use heater I got my colors blocked in here mm I'm still going because I don't know where to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, and it's hard to tell like where one layer ends and right. the next layer begins. Let's see. We probably made like four or five layers on our original painting. Mm. Yeah, we were going at it for a while. Yeah. Um, but just remember, like, it's going to be covered. A lot of this will be covered with your mm -hmm. grass and your flowers and um, your speckles. Yep. Splatters. Splatters. And, and the speckles. It's yep. one of the most fun things to do. Is yes. Splatter. I don't think you can ever have too many splatters. No. No. In a watercolor painting. Okay. I think I'm like a little bit darker on my bottom. I think I will too. Because my original is pretty dark. I think yeah. I did more layers on that. Yeah. But this also took about two hours, I think, when we were doing it originally. I don't think it took that long. It was over now. I thought it was like. Or now, yeah, but I mean, we were, we were kind of just Jen and doing other things yeah. too while we were doing it and taking our time. We will keep this to a smaller <laughs> time. <gasps> <Nope>. <laughs> so, especially if you want something darker, um, 
don't add as much water to it. Water will dilute it. But then they also don't want to go too dark either. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. Practice as you go. Yep. Right. I'm kind of adding some grassy brush strokes, but these will likely still get covered. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not being too particular about where they're where they're at right now, or what they're looking like. Mm -hmm. Just more mm -hmm. kind of planning. Yeah. How it's going planning to look. Ahead. Yep. 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 Okay. I think I'm gonna be done with this layer. I yep. Have, I have my bottom. I have my middle. You want the heat? Yeah, I probably need heat. Look at this big old pile here. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I had Ooh. a pile too. My bottom's not completely dry, but I'm going to start with the speckles. Mm. So, and I kind of use my speckles as like also planning like where things will go next. Got some pink up here. A little too high. If you want to pick up some color, just get it wet again mm -hmm. and then lift it. And some of the pigment will come up. Not all of it, but enough usually, depending on the color you use, to be able to cover it up. Um, Sarah lost her sound. Mm -hmm. Sarah, sometimes when we use the heater, it it sounds funny too. It cuts out. Hopefully that was it. Hopefully you get the sound back. Yeah. Okay. Starting the speckles. So to make speckles, you need really watered down um, paint. So it'll splatter easily. Mm -hmm. So this is a really... And it's a little bit yeah. unpredictable too. Yep. Mm -hmm. So say I don't want a bunch of speckles way up here i can just put a paper towel there mm -hmm. um, you can cover as much or as little or none <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> i'm gonna just cover that much i'm um, going back in with my bottom i want it darker just i'm just kind of slowly building it up and now just tapping the brush on my finger getting the speckles going Okay, Sarah got it fixed. Glad you got it fixed, Sarah. Oh, that's really dark. Remember, it does dry lighter, though. Yeah. Let's dab a little bit of that. I'm even getting some of these specks into the grass. Um, and I think that looks cool. Yeah, yeah I like the specks. Yeah, when they're not just in the area where that color is. Mm -hmm. So, like, I got purple where the yellow is and where the um, orange is. I'm not being super particular on where they're ending up. I just wanted to dry up my grass a little bit because it was mm. still wet. Mm -hmm. So when you speckle on something that's wet, it turns more into like a little blob. <laughs> blob. <laughs> Which I mean, it's still, <laughs> I'm still keeping with it. Yeah. You need all sorts of need kinds of speckles. Yep. I'm still just building up my bottom, my grass here. I want it darker. Um, I'm kind of planting some of my flower stems here. You can really have them go whatever way you want, but I have like a bigger one up to my right. And I'm just see. kind of dabbing around and um, I'm still using the big brush 
I'm not switched yet. Have you switched yet? Um, smaller. just for my speckles. Mm. I was using a smaller brush for speckles. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm gonna give a little tip. If you have white paint, the white is the only more opaque color in the in most of the watercolors. Um, so you can you mix it with other colors for them to show up more. So like my yellow speckles weren't showing up very well. So I'm going to mix some yellow in with my white and that'll just make them pop. Because mm -hmm. the rest, you know, they're more translucent. So but you see your yellow specks better. I'm gonna go in, I'm actually gonna do my splatters with a big brush. Let me see how that goes. And how you do it, how you splatter it can give you more control too. If you just tap it, you're gonna have a little bit less control. If you flick it, like with your finger, you'll have a tiny bit more control. Well, soon you could do it with a palette knife and just kind of flick the palette knife, oh, yeah. and you get a bit more control doing that too. So now this, I don't have enough paint on it. Here we go. I'm just kind of flicking it a little bit. I'm getting some really small splatters. Cool. And those, a lot of those, I can feel your splatters. <laughs> 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 a lot of these will still be kind of covered too, but I want some splatters like in the back. Yeah. Why do why do I have white paint all over me? Did I just get some in my hair? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I just felt some in mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Oh, I think I want to do like a little bit of blue. Sarah asked if um we're using the alt new watercolors and yes yes these that's what the set is it's a 12 set yeah they're really pretty colors we really like that one really pretty brand new to our shop okay adding a little bit of blue and um i'm gonna splatter at the end too this is just yeah. kind of like my background splatter beginning splatter yeah, yeah. I don't, I just, I don't know why I have white all over me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just surprised nothing's gotten on here. my shirt yet. <laughs> all right. Yes, you'll be covered in paint. <laughs> now, I, I already have most of my splatters done. Mm. And I'm going to just make some of them a little bit bigger. Like if I have a larger splatter area, mm. I'm going to grab a little bit of the same color. So... It'll kind of look like a here. I have some larger splatter areas that I just kind of widened up mm -hmm. where the splatter was. So it kind of creates more of like the distance, the distance, the distance flowers, <laughs> the distant flowers, the distant We can talk real good. I, um, I think I'm going to fix my grass a little bit because like it's very stark difference. I want it to be a little bit more blendy. Um, so I'm just going to kind of add some water on my edges here because I really just want it to flow more, not be so stop and start. If that's a term. Sure. Sure. Blendy, blendy. Um, Stacy said her desk has lovely splatters now. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. I mean, you can see our workspace. It's pretty bad. This. <laughs> we usually try to cover it up with something. Yeah. But this it sometimes works. Yeah. Other times it just gets added to the splatter mess. The thing about watercolors, though, is really easy to wipe up. Yeah. Yeah. Really and easy. Yeah. Just, just wipe get right like up. a wet paper towel or something. I mean, if you're worried about making a mess, you can um, get a little splatter box. You can make a box that you oh, splatter yeah. in, or Tim Holtz has a box, mm -hmm. a splatter box. Yeah. We should probably use that. <laughs> we we never do. We've, we just, we've just embraced free. the mess. <laughs> we have fully embraced it. We just it. go free here. Okay. I want some, like, deeper green. Yeah, I keep looking. If you see me looking over here, I'm just looking at my <laughs> my finished piece. Um, it's more helpful for me to to look at something while I'm painting.
And I think I'm almost ready to start doing my stems. So how did we do it? Did we do flowers first and then stems? Stems and flowers. I think so. I, I usually remember. do flowers first because otherwise I end up making stems that lead to nowhere. Yeah. Well, some stems... Yeah, like, some stems do to go to nowhere. Not go anywhere. Yeah. So I usually do flowers first. And when you start doing your flowers, you want to start out small because especially when you're, you're like trying to fix them and like they just grow. Yeah. I found that issue a lot. I'm like, oh. I really wanted this to be smaller. Okay, getting some deeper colors here. I'm doing a lot of um, blue and green mm. in the bottom here, mm -hmm. kind of mixing. You can do whatever colors you want. Yeah, I've mostly kept to greens and like yellow greens. Mm. Yeah, I have more like blue greens. It's funny, you can look at the same picture and yep. yours is going to be totally different. It's the beauty of it. That's what's fun about the classes, too. Mm -hmm. You like it when you guys share your pictures from yes, the classes. Yes. I mean, we do they're really like different. to see. Yeah. Because yeah. they're different. And, yeah. They're cool. Oh, Stacy says she has a silicone mat, but it's not on your desk right now. <laughs> yeah, a silicone mat would be great to put on mm -hmm. the top of mess. I mean, even just another piece of paper. Yeah. Paper towel. Yeah. Anything. Anything. Uh, dryer. Yes. Yeah. Center. Oh, that'll there. probably be my hustle. <laughs> there we go. you can use any dryer you have if you don't have like a craft dryer use a blow dryer yeah. yep works just fine this one is the ranger one um i just like this for videos because it's quieter yeah and i mean even when you're not doing the video it's nice yeah. not to just have like a <laughs> that was a good sound yeah but i mean we've used other ones too yeah they all work really well Coming along, coming along. Look how different they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I have a ton of splatters. Yeah, I've yet. yeah, yeah I've added a ton of splatters and some more of the splotchy flowers mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta start with flowers. Really, you can go for your background for like ever. Yeah, yeah, you really can. But to keep this class within hopefully an hour <laughs> or less. Um, if you are at a good stopping point with your background, let it dry or get a dryer and then get one of your smaller brushes out. <laughs> Clint. <laughs> My Dyson blow dryer shot mine across the room. I forgot how strong it was. <laughs> Funny. Clint works here. He likes to comment on yeah. the videos and Hi, Clint. be the jokester. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna go a lot of my let's see i have to keep referring back a lot of my stems i did i built them up too so i would start lighter and then i would go back over it with like a darker green um and then at the very end um i did a little bit of white just so there's some fun there so with everything that you're doing stems flowers start out lighter and build it up what was i doing first flowers I don't know. I did flower stems. Uh, well, actually, I'm I'm doing flower blobs, <laughs> and then I'm going to go into some grasses, and then go back to the flowers and define the blobs a little bit more. Blobs. We're very technical here. I think I'm going to start with my stems. You, you can do either way. Start with your flowers or stems, whatever it's easier for you. What are you, team flower, team stem? Team flower, <laughs> team stem. You have white paint all in your hair, You know, I, I feel like I did something. Yeah. That's, that's nice. It'll wash out. It's fine. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with like a very skinny brush, and I'm going to start doing some stems. Because why not? I'll be doing stems with you, actually. Um, 
And you really, you're just kind of just going to drag it up gently. I would go up. I think that's easier yeah, than going down. That's easier for me. Because then, you're, then most of your paint is like down here. And you can kind area. of flick it at the end. Yeah. So it'll have more of a tapered look at the top. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm just kind of just making this up as I go. And make sure you're using different shades of greens and layering up, layering them mm -hmm. up in there. Right. This looks like a good shade. Um, so I'm going to make some taller, some shorter, um, kind of going different ways because stems don't, they're not just straight up. They're, they're all over. Clint's team flower. <laughs> See how it is. Yeah. Clint. Any other team stems? <laughs> <laughs> also, if your background is not all the way dry, you'll start seeing your stems kind of blend into it. So you might want to dry that a little bit more. Or you can just go over it again later. Let's see, do a couple down here, and kind of make them go different ways. Um, and bring them down further. I don't know what's going on with that blob, but that's okay. I'm just gonna rub that in. You can use your fingers too. Because <laughs> why not? Um, I'm going to add like a little bit of blue to my stems too. I'll make them stand out more. I will say, I think something that's really helpful with watercolor painting is having a few different brands mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. or if you are only working with one brand, just mix the colors more. So you're not using, you know, the same green right, for right. all of this. Like mix your green in with some blue, mix it in with some orange, and that'll right. get you your deeper, more brownie colors. Mm -hmm. And I'm making some of mine lighter too, because the lighter ones are going to be more in the background. The darker ones are more in your foreground. Um, and then it's kind of hard to like, how many do you want? I, it's up to you. For me, like, I don't like it to be too cluttered. Yeah. But then I don't want it to be too a lot, bare. A lot of times <laughs> I'll add too many. Yeah. And then get all of it wet. So it kind of starts blurring in with itself. Um, and then that gives the look of there being a lot of them, mm. but it's not too overwhelming because they got blended together. Right, right. Like here, there's a lot happening. So I'll just kind of take a few areas and just blend it together. Yeah, and in the original painting that we were looking at, the bottom is very blendy. Like you don't see a lot of the bottom stems. They all just kind of go together. Stacy says that she uses a lot of print collections. Yeah. I love the there's, pink ones. Yeah, those they, are really nice really too. Nice. They have like really nice color. Like mm -hmm. the color comes up really nice. So I'm going down with some darker blues down here. And I think I'm going to kind of blend that out a little bit more too. Because I don't want them to, to, I don't know. Sticky? Sticky? I think they yeah. can look too sticky. Too sticky? Yeah. 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 Like more of the blended look. Yeah. Because then it's easier to to like fix your mistakes. Like, oh well I meant to do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also adding some browns and some yellows in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doing like a lighter lighter green too. Mm-hmm. Um just for fun. Like the sun is hitting the stems Ooh. under. Really, you should do it all the same side, but I'm kind of doing both. Yeah, wherever. Wherever. Because um, it's not too tactical of a piece. <laughs> and then I'm also going to start adding some, some little stick and grass pieces up into the flowers. Mm. Um, not as heavy as they are down here, but just so they're, they're up there too. Yeah. 
And I'm just kind of adding some more green and blue on my bottom and bringing that up higher. I'm still using my little skinny brush. Just because I want this to be kind of blended, kind of not, I don't know. Okay, I think I'm going to start with my flowers. Um, for my flowers, I'm going to go back Let's see. Back with my big brush. And you can make your flowers whatever color you want. Um, we did purple, purplish. So that kind of like really pops mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah, I don't know. Really I really liked do, how the colors were going, but I might do purple and pink. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll kind of see. We'll see how it looks. Maybe I'll add more oranges into this. Yeah. Like the orange and the purple. Mm -hmm. That's where I think I'm going to lean more towards. So these flowers, if you look at... Here, grab yours. Ours are both very different. Like, um, you kind of start, like, wider, I guess. Yeah. And um, you're going to go back and layer it and put in darker as you go. And the type of flower, I don't know what it is. but I don't know. Uh, it's uh, something. Let's see. Clint still here? Clint knows all the flowers. Knows the flowers. What, what is I, this? What are these? <laughs> <laughs> so for like the shape of the flower, you can kind of fix it as you go if it's not quite right. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to kind of go in very lightly to kind of get my shapes in here. Yeah, so I, I got mine. I kind of went off of like a blob that was already there. <laughs> so like, here, I'll start with this blob. Yeah. Um, I made some lines across like that. I'm trying to make sure I'm not blocking it with my hand. Some lines all the way across. Clint says they look like poppies to me. That's what I was thinking, but yeah. I didn't know if there were purple poppies. Are there purple poppies? I don't know. Um, the orangey I was using, I was going to make more poppies. Jan says wildflowers. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. That's wild all flowers. the more specific we need. Yeah. So my shapes are kind of like, almost kind of like triangles. That's mm -hmm. what I'm kind of starting with. Oh, Sarah says if you did them all red, they look yeah. like poppies. Yeah, true. Whoa, that was really dark. I'll make some poppies. Well, maybe I'll leave that one really dark. I kind of like it. I'm starting with mine really dark, oh, and then okay. um, yeah, I might blend them with a little bit of a lighter color after. Mm. There's some poppies. Poppies. I'm going back over them now, like with some darker, kind of towards the bottom of the flower. And if you know how to make other flowers, make those. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Some yellow flowers would be pretty in this, mm -hmm. too. Yellow, orange. Or smaller. Yeah, different types of flowers. Smaller flowers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having my flowers tilt different directions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, you don't want them to look perfect. Because mm -hmm. they're in the wild. And have, like, a few different sizes. So mm -hmm. the ones in the back might be a little bit smaller. Ones in the front can be a little bigger. And I'm going to even add flowers that don't have stems yet because I can I can always add more stems. I'm just kind of looking at it, see where I want. Somewhere. I think I'm going to add some pink in there too. Mm -hmm. Oh, Clint says it be all beautiful with iris. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how to paint that. <laughs> yeah. Come over here and paint with us, Clint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's see how your painting's doing. I 
I'm even adding some pink to my purple flowers mm -hmm. because yeah. I want to. Why not? Yeah, have a little bit. I mean, yeah, flowers aren't all just one solid yeah. color. Yeah. Just makes them a little more a little bit of everything. realistic. And the way that the sun hits them. And, yeah. yeah. They all look different. Some of mine almost look like um like a heart shape. That works too. If you're not really sure kind of what shape to do, start doing like little hearts almost. Really, you could just make blobs of circles and it would still look good. Yeah. They would just look, you know, kind of abstract flowers. Sure. It works just fine. Usually I like to make one bigger flower that mm -hmm. stands out a little bit more. Yeah. So I, think I this, might make a couple of mine bigger too. This will probably be my big flower. So start out small and then you can always make it bigger. Because I have a big blob that I'm working on top of here. Yeah. Here's my <laughs> here's my big flower. Oh yeah, yeah. Put a bit bigger. I'm still using my big brush, but you can go in with kind of details with a small brush too. Um, I'm just kind of using this very gently. And I'm putting the darkest color at the very bottom um, and then kind mm -hmm. of letting it spread to get lighter towards the top. Uh, Teresa, during late, we have, um, we're using a lot of different watercolors. We have, we have Prima, a couple of different Prima palettes. We have Woodlands and, oh, Complexion is over there. We have Boy watercolor tubes, doing a few of those. And then we have, um, this set right here is the Altenew pan set. It's like the 12 pan set. This is brand new to our shop. Um, we just started selling the Altenew products. This one is really good for springy stuff. Mm -hmm. We've been using a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and we don't really have like a favorite. Like we no. we love all these. Yeah, and we've been going back and forth and using some of each. Mm -hmm. Like I really like the greens and the yellows and the woodlands. And that's what I've been using for most of my grass and these yellows. And yeah, just yeah. kind of going back and forth using all of them. Yeah, I mean you really can't find your favorites until you try them all. Really, yep. <laughs> just yep. just try them and see what you like best. Um. The tubes, like, is a little bit different because you have to be able to mix them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a tiny bit more skill. The palette. Yeah. Mix them on. The pans are, um, I guess, a little bit more beginner friendly because they come with all kinds of shades. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to mix around And then so you just much. get them wet mm -hmm. and get started. There's usually also with the pans some areas like here, here, or on this one here where you can grab some of two different colors and mix them together. Mm hmm so you don't also need a palette. Yeah. Kind of an all-in-one. Yeah. Easier if you're on the go, too, I guess. Yeah. If you're painting on the go. Planting in plein air. Which is French. Oh. It means it? in the open air. Oh. Yeah. So, if, so, like, yeah, people go paint outside. Oh, yes. That would, would be lovely. They would need to, you know, use a pan. I would love to paint outside. Yeah. I mean, it's it's sunny it's, here, but it's still like... It's a 30s. lie. It looks so nice out it there. It looks so nice. But mm -hmm. it's a lie. That's Michigan. We usually have like a little bit of a fake spring and then like it'll snow again. Yeah. And then real spring doesn't start to like May. <laughs> yeah. So we had fake spring like the last two days and now yeah. it's, today's I think the it's reminder. Warm, I think it's supposed to warm up again to yeah. like 40s, 50s. And then it's just going to be a giant mud mess mm -hmm. for a while and then it'll probably snow again. Mm hmm most likely that's michigan for you we get used to it but man we we love spring i mean if I mean, it's warm out yeah. you see everyone outside yeah everyone you're throwing our coats tops. off and yeah. we are just out <laughs> yes okay i'm gonna go back in with some stems i think i think that's our yeah wow, i'm gonna yeah. go back to stems even some more I have a couple of floaty flowers with no stems. Mm -hmm. So 
So not every stem needs a flower, but yeah. every flower does need a stem. You don't really want some floating, guys. Yeah. I guess if you want it to be really abstract. Sure. Um, I usually like to add like a little base. So I'll have, I'll have my stem and then I'll just kind of add a little, a little bit thicker stem towards the top of the flower. Mm -hmm. I'll do that on some of my bigger flowers. Yeah, like the ones that can really pop up. Yeah. yeah. And some of my lighter stems, I'm going to go back over a little bit with some darker. Dark green and a little bit of that blue. Because mm -hmm. I have a lot of blue down here, too, that mm -hmm. I kind of want to bring up a little further. And it just kind of makes it stand out more. Bit more dimension. I could watercolor all day. Yeah. It's just relaxing. It is very relaxing. Especially with like kind of flowy flowers like this they don't need to be yeah perfect or... yeah it's just just start going and see where it takes you yeah yeah like this one i don't even know what's going on it doesn't even look like a flower but but it works but it's just there and just yeah <laughs> make it work yeah this style <laughs> of watercolor painting is really nice yeah where it's like you know what it is but it's not super particular mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah. it's not because I mean just straight abstract painting can be tricky too. Mm -hmm. But if you kind of have a little bit of a reference to like flowers, mm -hmm. yeah, it just makes it a little nicer. Oh, or Jan easier. says March is Color Therapy Month, so this is perfect. Mm, color therapy. I yes. haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. March is also National Craft Month. I've heard that. So that's cool. Therapy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What all is color therapy? Like, what all does that do? Yeah, I mean, what do you do with that paint and therapy? Painting for therapy. Add more color to your life, to your home, maybe. Paint a wall. That's what you did. I just painted a wall. Yeah? It was very ambitious. Yeah? Um, How did it go? I it, mean, I saw well, your finished project. Yeah. It looked good. So let me give you the backstory. I'm 34 weeks pregnant. <laughs> I have a five-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old. So painting a wall with those two around is really <laughs> difficult. Um, and I was kind of going for like an abstract cloudy effect. But then I changed my design like five different times and then it turned into like an ombre pink wall. Started out dark and then it went up and kind of cloudy at the top. So it turned out fine, but it took me like three days and mm. it was exhausting. But I like it. It's, it adds a lot of color to that room. The baby's nursery. So if you want to add color, just mm. paint a wall. Mm. I did look for like wallpaper or like wall decals and I could not find something that I liked. Oh. And they're all really expensive. I'm like, oh, I'll just paint a wall. Yeah. It'll be easy. Well, that's what we did with <laughs> our background here. Yes, we painted that. We painted that. One day we just decided, we're like, we need some color in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. It really only took us like a day. It took you. Yeah. Yeah, like it was a like whole a day. day. Yeah. But um, that was really fun. Jan says, color therapy is using color, whether it's painting, coloring pictures, as therapy to relax and de-stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Some colors can be very relaxing. Yeah. I'd say this is a pretty relaxing palette. Yeah. Springy. Yeah. Warm. Mm hmm. Be nice. Mm hmm Um, I'm kind of adding more water down to my bottom. Just kind of blending this out a little bit more. Let's see. 
trying to think what else my needs. I think a little more blurriness. Blurriness. So my flowers, I'm going to go back again and add, um, I don't know, some darker or lighter elements. I have like a random orange over here that needs something else to it. Add some pinkish purple. I don't know what's on there. So you can keep layering it up for Ever. forever, <laughs> days. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to do some. But more if you feel splatters. like, yeah, if yeah, you feel, if you feel like, like you're it's finished, done, then then just stop. I feel like I'm know. getting pretty close. I'm, I'm almost, going to add. I'm almost done. Some more splatters. Mm -hmm. You should dry it up first. Yeah, I'm gonna save um some more of my splatters for the end. Yeah. Like I'm need another flower. Missing a flower need right here. One. Put it on. Here we go. I'm kind of adding some more um green to like the bottom of my flower. And it's kind of hard to know when to stop too. Yeah. Really could keep going forever, but at some point, <laughs> you gotta stop. Let's see. Okay. I'm gonna add in some more speckles. I'm going to add some blue mixed with white speckles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just because I feel like that's what it needs. Blue. Maybe some pink. Oh, Jan says she loves how quiet that heat tool is. Yeah, yes. It's very nice. This is the Ranger one. Um, we've used a lot of different ones. They work great. This one is quieter though. Yeah. That's yeah. Them. I mean, all the ones we've tried work just as good. It's yeah. just yeah. The quiet quietness. This one's also a little wider at mm. the mouth. <laughs> It's wider at the mouth. <laughs> so we have all these technical terms. Yeah. So it can be good for heating up a larger area. We make up the technical terms. We just make them up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with your splatters, you can decide like how far up you want to go. Um, I'm kind of leaving my top not super splattery. It's kind of up to you. Yeah. I'm going to bring think some it's more like, down. Like the uh, pollen in the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think of it here. And this painting, at least. Um, I'm going to add some to my bottom, too. Just... I'm also going to use this, this really light blue to fill in some of these leaves, grass, leaves. grassy areas. Grass. Just because I think it's some... a nice color. Purple. Maybe do some bigger here and there around here mm -hmm. so remember for splattering you can do I mean you can do a big brush or a little and then you can either tap it or I like to flick it sometimes my finger it makes it a little bit more controlled because I mixed the white in with this blue it's really covering up whatever's behind it so mm -hmm. if you want to cover up something add some white I think I might do um Let's see, some pink splatters. And you don't have to splatter if you don't want yeah. to. Up to you. We just like to splatter yeah. everything. Cards, scrapbook layouts. Not very layouts. often do I get through a something that I d painted anything yeah. and yeah. it doesn't have any splatters. There's always splatters. There's always something. That's why our office is always so oh. empty. Oh, Sarah says they look beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Looks... Mm 
It's very mm-hmm. relaxing. And it and it came out different too from my, mm-hmm. my original bag. Um Okay, I'm liking my splatters. I think I'm gonna do some some white. Yeah. White splatters. Well, with a little bit of blue mixed in because my water's blue. <laughs> really? You should change out your water. Yeah. Once it gets kind of really gross. <laughs> Like ours. Yeah. Look at yours. It's like, oh yeah. At least, at least yours is at least blue. Mine's blue. That's just like a brown. <laughs> I guess it looks kind of coffee-ish. Yum. Whoop. No, I just did a big splatter there. Easily fixable. And if you're not getting enough splatter, just try putting more paint, try putting more water. Kind of takes some practice to get the right consistency. I'm probably going to do, yeah, more white splatter in my sky, too. It's not as noticeable. Jan says that we inspired you. That's good. Cool. That is our that, plan. Yep, that's what we're aiming for. Good. Hope you can watercolor something. Yeah. Whether it's flowers or something else. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I'm I'm almost done. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much there. I was gonna go through and add just a little bit more white on my stems. Okay. And I might call it good after this little bit of white. If you hear background noises right now, we do have a couple of customers coming yeah. in. So I'm doing some white in here. Yeah, I think mine's done. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, you got a lot of white down there, too. Yeah. add some of my white down further. I got a lot happening. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually the case. Yeah. Yeah, really, I feel like the last a lot of classes I've ended up with, like, oh, that's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay though. Love it. I'm even going in with some green and blue down here too. We'll just take some stems. Sarah, customers are always a good thing. Yes, they are. Yes. I'm going to go for the best part. <gasps> wait, wait for me. The removing the tape. Favorite part. Look how crisp that looks. If you're painting super wet, you might want to wait. So, like, you're wet bubble doesn't travel and ruin your spot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh look at that clean clean lines i have a medium clean corner <laughs> if you have a corner i can show you closer after i get this off but if you miss a corner you can go back over it with some white acrylic paint mm-hmm. i did and, the same thing yep. look <laughs> why do i have yeah it happens like it happens on the corners a little bit on my bottom too so yeah here um i'll just take first i'll try to take up as much of the watercolor as i can so get it a little bit wet it looks like i'm making the spot bigger but just wait and then pick it up so that way it gets as light as you can make it Mm -hmm. and then just grab a little bit pretty big spots a little bit of white acrylic paint you just paint over it you won't even notice i did that here too oh did you actually yeah. on the same corners that's funny it's i did probably get it on my original it's probably this... how you apply the paint or the the, the tape, tape. Yeah. you want to really make sure you get it on there pretty tight and then do the same over here 
Well, I'm applying blue water to this. So I'm going to how helpful that <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. Medium. So there we go. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's see. This one's a bit more vibrant, I think, mm -hmm. than my original. It has oh, a few yeah. more yeah. Um, oranges, maybe. I'm getting fingerprints. This one looks like a heart. <gasps> it does. I love it. Oh, love it. But there we go. So I'll fix those edges later. But yeah, here's mine. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like your clues with those purples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's my original. Different they are. Yeah. I guess I, yeah, I did bring my flowers up a tiny bit more. I don't know which I like more, my original yeah. or the one I just did. I don't know. Mm. Which one do you like? Your original or your... Which, which one? You just did that one? Yeah. I like the colors better in that one. Yeah, I think. this one's a bit more vibrant. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like this one. I like this one. My flowers look better yeah. on this one. This one, they're more blobbier because I, I just really, really like know what I'm colors. doing. I really like all the bluey green. Yeah, I like that blue. But that the those colors purple. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. This was a lot of fun and yeah. relaxing, and I just love watercolor. Yeah, we hope you got some watercolors yeah. out and got painting too. And if you didn't watch this later, yeah, um, you find it on our Facebook page, and we also will upload it to YouTube within a couple of days, whenever. Get on to editing it <laughs> and then on our classes page you always see um, our upcoming classes and then you scroll down you'll see our past classes so you can always click on them watch them and see what um different products we use and stuff so the next class is junk journal, junk journal. We'll be oh, making a fun. page pages a couple pages we'll see how it goes junk journal pages journal pages we're gonna do a little bit of yeah, everything it'll be it. like paper yeah if you don't media. know where to start with a junk journal mm -hmm. this class for you yeah yeah it'll be a lot of fun yeah okay so join us next friday um yeah i think that's it yeah <laughs> we'll see you then thanks for joining bye